Hello and welcome to my Bluetooth speaker build log. So if you've not seen this yet, have a look at the previous video where I give a quick overview and a sound demonstration. But yeah, if you want to see how it was built, uh, continue watching. So I had three main goals when designing my Bluetooth speaker. Uncompromised bass, loud volume, and an enclosure that can be considered portable. All three work against each other, so it was a balancing act to get it all working well. Reproducing bass requires a much bigger enclosure than would be required for just mid-range frequencies. So instead of using two full-range speakers with an internal divide, I decided to use a single bass speaker that could utilize almost the entire internal volume, essentially working like a subwoofer. In theory, this would deliver deeper bass with the same sized enclosure. The other frequencies were to be handled by smaller speakers that would have their own internal enclosures. So the first step was to choose some speakers, to which I'll refer to as drivers. Because I didn't want to spend much money on them, I decided to use some from an old set of creative computer speakers that I had lying around. While not of the highest quality, they do sound decent enough for general listening. The subwoofer was particularly suitable as it had been designed to deliver high pressure sound from a relatively small enclosure. Next it was time to make the enclosure. I used 12mm MDF sheets. MDF is dense which is great for speakers and it's also easy to work with. Before I boxed in the mid-range drivers I added some dampening which was actually just roof insulation. Above these enclosures sit the tweeters. Next I added the port, which was just a length of PVC pipe. I used an online calculator to make sure that it was the right length for the resonant frequency I was after. Note the white stuff going along the back edges. It's silicon sealer and was added to make sure the back access panel seals well when screwed down, allowing no air to escape which would harm audio quality. The amplifier I chose was a 15 watt tripath based amp. It was an easy choice to make because tripath based amps are powerful, cheap and sound really good. They're also particularly efficient which is great news for battery life. For power I decided to use a 12 volt rechargeable battery pack from an RC car. It's charged by an internal battery charger that automatically stops charging once the pack is full. Multi-gang switches are used for the power and charge buttons, which simultaneously connect and disconnect various wires. This means that the unit can still be used whilst it's charging, and it also has the option of running entirely off the mains if needed. While I've not timed the unit's listening hours, I found that I only need to charge the unit every few weeks or so, which is all thanks to the efficient tripath amplifier, and of course the capacity of the batteries. For Bluetooth functionality, I used a cheap Bluetooth receiver from China. It runs off 5 volts, so I used a simple book step down converter to attach it to the 12 volt battery. Now, there is some signal processing going on to get even more out of the system. First, the Bluetooth module's stereo signal is mixed down to mono using two 160 ohm resistors. This is because stereo won't really be noticeable on a unit of this size, and having just a mono signal allows for a neat double amplification trick for the bass driver. So for this what happens is that the mono signal enters channel 1 of the amplifier through a 1 to 1 ratio audio transformer. This transformer is from a cheap ground loop isolator and is there to eliminate the ground loop that is caused by the Bluetooth module and amplifier sharing the same ground. The signal is then amplified and sent to the mid-range and treble drivers. The treble drivers, by the way, have 2.2 microfarad capacitors connected with them in series. This is to allow only high frequency sounds reaching the tweeters. This same amplified signal is also sent through another 1 to 1 ratio audio transformer, also from a ground loop isolator and it basically floats the signal completely from its source, which is the output of the amplifier. This signal then goes through a low pass filter consisting of a few capacitors and resistors, one of which is adjustable and forms the tone control for the bass. The signal then enters channel two of the amplifier and is amplified again, creating a strong bass signal, which is then sent straight to the bass driver. 
while it isn't a particularly elegant method, it is a quick and dirty way of getting a loud bass signal out of a single stereo amplifier. For volume control, I used a logarithmic potentiometer. Logarithmic should always be used over linear for audio applications because of the way human hearing works. So, to finish the unit off, I glued on some textured fabric that looks and feels a bit like leather. It resists scratch as well, but it is susceptible to gouging if heavily knocked, so next time I might use something a little more robust. Diamond Eye Marine base plates were used for the hook latches on either side, and a strap from an old laptop bag was utilised for the handle. The front grille is just some perforated aluminium, which is screwed to the front using some standoffs to make a small gap between it and the speakers. Its edges were quite sharp, so I simply cut down the side of an HDMI cable and removed the wires from inside. The empty rubber sheathing was then slotted over the edge of the aluminium and glued in place, which makes a nicer buffer and also frames the front nicely. So that's how I built it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please hit the like button and maybe consider subscribing. I hope I see you next time where I'll be showing you how to build a 100 watt super bright LED light panel.